My name is Agnes. Uh, we are in Latvia, in southeast of Kurland, near the border with Lithuania. I'm forest owner here for more than 30 years. I feel that I am, from one hand, I am forest owner. In other hand, I am just temporary user of the land. In the perspective that uh, forest is something that stays forever. When I came here, it was uh, unmaintained forest. It's uh, quite a lot of former forest was during the dark years has been cut down and something has been grown back. It's not a really good quality forest. Nobody has taken care about all that. Nothing productive, not a meadow, not a forest. Some parts of the quite good forested with grey alder, what is a pioneer piece here. Some forest is a bit old, it's a spruce monoculture from 60-70 years old and around is a, quite a lot of mighty oaks, same as this tree. And this tree is a, some kind of message from past generations that there was some kind of semi-open land with the meadows and still in the forest you could find a lot of plants that is more meadow plants than forest plants. Today most of ashes are gone because of ash disease but basically if you look to the history of the place I see this place as a broadly forest. Here is some aspen. Here is one more oak, there is some maple, other oak. I'm just trying step by step understand what here was been and what here could be. And uh, I see the forest that it is a multi-layer forest where there is uh, some kind of canopy layer and uh, also I am inserting some kind of second layer trees that could grow under the canopy. Hornbeam, wild pear, wild apple and it's also more secure uh, that if something happened with the tall trees, I have some shorter trees. This is a sweet chestnut, uh, Castanea sativa. It's a native to southern Europe, up to somewhere Austria, I guess. And here is a group with the next tree and probably they will help uh, with pollination to each other in the future. First nuts will be after maybe 10 or uh, 15 years, then this part of the older forest will be gone, uh, fell for timber, and these uh, young trees will be the next uh, canopy trees. This is a black walnut. Here it's planted under the canopies and it's not suffered from the frost. In the spring we have quite a lot of early frosts. Uh, this is a Douglas spruce. Normally it grows for timber and it could be a perfect uh, timber tree. Uh, my forest is uh, located in the uh, middle of very big forested area. Almost all forest land around belong to state. And uh, there is the industrial scale forestry. They clear cut everything what they can and then prepare soil and plant spruce. Uh, today I think that most of the old trees in surroundings are at my land. And also with this uh, old forest, which is uh, gone, is uh, quite a lot of biodiversity and uh, species diversity is uh, gone. And this forest becomes some kind of spruce fields 
with the species that only belong to the spruce society. But as uh, this is a broadleaf uh, forest, uh, wet soils, but very fertile soils on some kind of limestone beneath. And also I understand that uh, spruce is not a crop what I could rely here because the uh, spruce beetle are coming and uh, I see this uh, my forest some kind of biodiversity island in all that. Today people think that forest is only for timber, but I think that uh, forest is a, also a very good place to get some, some food and make this landscape more edible. I know that the, from previous tests and some experience the chestnut could grow under the tree canopies and reach a quite good height here and be a really good timber tree. And, uh, also produce uh, chestnuts in at least in the west part of the Latvia and the Kurland. Uh, tree hazels, I am a bit now experimenting how, how they could grow in the forest. But you not actually need uh, quite a lot. You need some trees to get a quite good pollination. Chestnut is a little bit more trickier because they are blooming in different times and then probably you need, need to take uh, some kind of um, cluster with the trees and with the chestnuts it's very good that it's uh, uh, flowering something after midsummer and it means that it's uh, super safe to the frost and they are not the flowers could not be damaged by the late frost in the spring and the nuts are chestnuts are ready something around the beginning of October they are also possible in the forest to grow some walnuts, Euglans regias. They have also have very good timber quality, but how they will grow in forest is uh, just a bit experiment. And uh, in worst case, you will get uh, quite a good nuts, if uh, not the timber. Nut trees are normally are non-invasive and not dangerous to local ecosystems. They just are one one additional tree to the system, and not they are not really spreading out and not taking over other species. This is a quite good. They are keeping the spot where they are. have some feelings that I need to really cooperate with the forest and understand what forest wants and how I think today I am look, look to the world from tree perspective. If I am a tree, what do I want? What is the best conditions for me? Hazelnuts are a bit shedding out all weeds and grasses and make a better soil for starting oaks and some other trees and then you could just a little bit trim it and space out. You could also make a broadly forest beginning from that. It's a just observation and uh, no one recipe from one tree. Uh, we humans tend to concentrate everything plant trees in the orchards and grow one piece in the quite a vast area with apples or cherries or nuts. And then we get all possible diseases and uh, insects also concentrated. Then we need to spray and actually this is some kind of dance forever. How I see the other solution is just spread out all these uh, trees around the landscape because part of them you could grow 
in quite wild conditions. Probably they need some protection while they are, are uh, is young, but they are quite mature. They could sustain by themselves. All forests is in Northern Europe and in, also in Latvia. It's not really wild, it's man-made. All landscape around is a man-made. All roads, ditches, forests. What is a native piece? This is also a quite tricky question here. We have one of the planet's uh, newest ecosystem. It started only some 12,000 years ago and part of the species uh, came, came naturally. Part of the tree species came by humans. Sweet cherries a few hundred years ago. Now we consider them native. Apples come maybe 500 years ago. Today also we consider them as a native. And uh, probably we should, as a humans, consider to bring some species that could come here and start to grow them now because this climate is warming up and uh, this uh, border between native and non-native are really disappearing. Only things that we have to be afraid from species that are really invasive. But there is a quite a lot of observations and science around it and even we today know what we could plant and what could really stay in the forest. Such uh, ordinary trees like a birch or, or maples have a good quality timber. For example, from birches and maples you could also extract the tree sap in the early spring. M maples are a little sweet. It's a bit less sweet as a Canadian maple, but still it's a quite sweet and nice to drink. It's a really natural and traditional drink here. Also birch sap, you could ferment it. Also some what we use as a normal timber tree like a linden. It uh, blooms after uh, midsummer in beginning of July here and it's a perfect uh, addition for bees. You just extend uh, the honey season for almost a month. There is a common belief that trees uh, need uh, as much light as possible. Uh, I have found that uh, the cherries in the field grow quite evenly, but the same cherries that is growing under the canopy reach its height around two meters. Obviously, they are somehow support each other, or in the young age, the young broadleaf trees are more shadow tolerant than in the old age. And this is, yeah, it's also for my person I'm learning and it's some kind of fun to do really practical things and a little bit uh, be in this a something be like a child only play a little bit uh, more serious games with the life. If there are, is, for example, with say four hectare, maybe five or six hundred spruces, and then you leave places open, the broadleaf trees could come by, by themselves, or you could plant them, and then the spruce little bit nurse the broadleaf trees, and they will grow straight up, because the uh, only thing that this uh, guy need to, that it's open top, and it could grow straight up to the skies. I 
I'm doing this uh, broadly forestry here is to be also some kind of um, seed source for all surrounding that at least in um, one place there will be more or less all broadleaf trees that are native to here and some potential uh, native species like a uh, beech and hornbeam that uh, didn't came yet but they are just approaching moving north putting all together I could little bit see what is growing best and uh, then the next step will be for the nature because if the trees start to self seed then uh, most successful self seeding will be species that are most adapted to this place and it's uh, really important that there is uh, some seed source left. From some kind of general security, food security point, it's very hard if you have some kind of uh, protein load and food just around the corner. And this is uh, one thing what we could do is uh, seed dispersal. We just put seeds and move plants around. It could be road or small paths in the forest or village. And this will be your path and maybe for other people to have some food when they need. This is some kind of, you could call it edible landscape. And also some kind of diversity for birds, animals, they all will love this food. And actually we could thank to the trees about all, almost all most fertile agriculture lands that we are farmed today. And trees actually was a core for all ecosystem. Quite nice feeling of the forest owner that you have created your own TV channel 